So I recently had a really great question from a private student about what do I think the most important instrument is for music producers or just people that are making music in their DAW. And I had to say keyboards. And I've really firmly held on to that belief because of a number of reasons. You know, I think one of the most obvious ones is speed. So if you're writing something in the piano roll, there's nothing wrong with that, but it is pretty slow. So if you're on the keyboards and you can just, you know, write melodies with your hand, it's just unbelievably faster. Uh, especially if you can play those in to your MIDI um, instead of writing them in with the computer mouse. It's just a lot faster. That's just the reality of it. Another thing is that playing the keyboards as a music producer is very tangible. You're doing it with your hands. You know, when you're trying to train your ear to know the difference between a major or a minor chord, for instance, it's a lot easier to just sit at a piano and go back and forth. Here I'm going back and forth major, minor, and I can train my ear to hear that difference. Same thing over here, major, minor. If your ear can't hear the difference between a major and a minor chord, I could probably say that's one of the things we diagnose for like, okay, that's why you're having a lot of trouble with your music. You're just bumping around in the dark. You really don't know what's going on if you can't hear the difference between a major chord and a minor chord. And you get the visual component too when you're looking down at your hands and you're feeling what it feels like to play that on the keyboard. So I think the keyboards are also, are also really great for your ear. Another thing is you could take this chord and start experimenting with extending it. And here I'm taking a major chord, right? And it's a C major chord. If I just skip another space and add this on, you can see that's a C major seven. So right off the bat, we have a more complex sounding chord. If I take this note and I bring it down a half step, now I can hear what C dominant seven sounds like. If I was to take that note and go up a half step, I'm back to just a regular C chord, right? Because I'm doubling up one of those three original tones. So if I, from right here, I'm C major seven. If I go down, C dominant seven. Now you can hear the difference. You can train your ear to hear the difference between a C major seven chord and a C dominant seven chord. If I keep going down, I have C major six. If I keep going down, now we have something really weird, right? Because <laughs> we're adding on the raised fifth um, onto originally a C triad. So that's pretty obscure. You probably wouldn't play that chord very often uh, in your music. You could but maybe not as often as here, here, and here. And you can train your ear in all of those places, right? You could do the same thing with a minor chord. So, okay, we go back to the minor chord now, do the same thing. Now we have the spy chord, minor major seven. Back to just regular C minor, because we're doubling up the Cs. We go down instead. We have C minor seven, keep going down, C minor six. This also helps with chord symbols because people get really confused. What's the difference between C major six and C minor six? Well, I just showed you. You can see it on the keyboards. The only difference is what's going on in the original triad. In both cases, you still have a major six with that A. The A the sixth, the major sixth, is not changing, but the name of the chord does. Okay, so this is why keyboards are so useful for music producers. Uh, it's tangible, it's training your ear, you're learning about chords and their differences and why they're named what they're named. That's a huge thing. And now I'm going to throw in something that I probably should have thrown in first in this video, which is bass lines. So everyone, you know, we have samples, we have loops, we have sample packs, we have all this great stuff. And people are trying to make tracks. And usually the thing that gives us away as amateurs is our bass, because we don't know what our bass line should be. And we pick kind of kind of funky notes for the bass line. It doesn't sound very good, or it sounds a little off. 
and God forbid you're showing that to a music publisher or a music library owner or a record label executive or someone like that. And they're like, yeah, it sounds good, but the bass is a little wonky. And, you know, and then a lot of people will make tutorials like, why is my bass out of tune? Out of tune. The bass isn't out of tune. You're just picking the wrong notes. You don't know key signatures. You don't know what sounds right. You can train your, you can train your ear to do that by just playing the chord. So I have a C minor chord, right? Now with my left hand, I'm playing this with my right hand now. Usually people play chords with their left hand. Play it with your right hand so that you can try adding bass notes now with the left hand. Okay, I've got my bass. Now I'm just adding C on the bottom. And someone might say, okay, yeah, what's the point of that? Actually, let me move this to the side. Well, now we can train our ear to do something else. We're not talking about major and minor versus that. No, now we're just looking at a chord and we're looking at what the left hand is gonna do. So here's my bass note down here. It's a piano sound, but you could imagine this as an 808 or a synth bass or electric bass guitar sound. Okay, what if I was right here? Okay, well that sounds different, right? Than if I was right here. This has sort of a finality to it or a resolution to it. You know, it sounds like the home of that chord we're reinforcing because we are, we're at the root note. But not so much if I'm right here. Now I can't tell you how many times I've looked at students' tracks and I looked at their bass line and they were hitting, this would be called a second inversion because it's the second possible note that's not the root note. And they're hitting that note in the bass line of their track and they wonder why their bass doesn't sound exactly right. And I would just move that note down to there. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, that sounds better. That sounds more strong. The other one sounded okay, but this one sounds like a better note. Well, you could sit at the piano and just train your ear to hear the difference. One is a stronger resolution than the other because the root is always stronger than the fifth when it's in the bottom. Sometimes when you have the fifth in the bottom, we call this an inversion. That can sound really good because it pushes the ear in an interesting way but the root will always sound more powerful. That's just the reality of it. And then if you do something weird, like you hit the seventh, it doesn't sound bad, but it kind of wants to resolve again to that same note, in this case, just upper register. So these are things that you can train your ear to do, and it sounds different and feels different, but has a similar idea when you have a major chord up above, All right? Same idea. And from a creative standpoint, a lot of tracks can be made by just having a moving bass, which can sound really interesting to people. All right, so these are all things that you can do as a music producer on the keyboards, and it really, really helps. So I'm a firm believer that if you're trying to get better at producing music, you got to have a keyboard in your studio, a little cheap mini, uh, MIDI keyboard, a small one, doesn't really matter. Even if you have just a one octave MIDI keyboard, you can sit there and play triads. In fact, I think most music producers that are trying to make music on their computer or beats on their computer, they could really benefit from just doing this, like C major to C minor, because you gotta train your ear to hear the differences between these chords. And then if you wanna get into the bigger chords, like seventh chords and ninth chords and everything else, you gotta have that foundation. Otherwise, it's all gonna feel like a mishmash. And from just a visual uh, perspective, think about what you see on a piano roll. You're just seeing like lines. Everything looks the same, right? Now, of course, there's a visual component here, but it's more tangible because you're playing it. So I understand people prefer the piano roll. They like using the mouse. They, they're so used to making music since the, the very beginning by clicking in the piano roll. But if you have the keyboards at your disposal, it is going to be faster for writing music generally. It's more tangible and perhaps even more inspiring to make music that way. And the visual component is a little more clear because when you're looking at the piano roll, think about it. Everything just looks like dots or lines. Everything looks kind of the same. It's very hard to distinguish what you're seeing. And that's also messing people up. It's slowing you down. Um, don't look at the piano as something you need to be a master of. 
Look at it as a tool for producing your music and I think it'll really help you. But yeah, I'm gonna end it right here and make sure you check the links down below. There's a bunch of fun stuff there to check out. I'll see you on the next video and have fun making music.